Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ferdos Nipu. I am a second year medical student at Michigan State University College of Osteopathic Medicine. In this video, I want to talk about writing the med school personal statement. I know this can be a very challenging process for many students. That's why I want to share with you a simple guide on how to go about writing a personal statement. So first, what is this personal statement? Essentially, it is a one-page essay on why you want to go to medical school. You see, unlike the MCAT or GPA, which are the objective components of your application, the personal statement is a subjective expression of who you are and why you chose to pursue medicine. And one thing we should note is that for both MD and DO schools, the character limit for your personal statement is 5300, and that's what space is included. This comes about to be a page and one small paragraph. So the first thing you want to make sure you're doing when you're writing your personal statement is that you're answering the prompt. So in one way or another, when admissions committee reads your paper, it should be very clear on why you want to go to medical school, on why you chose to become a doctor, and why you are a good fit. Now, one of the most difficult questions that many students struggle with is answering the question, why medicine and why not anything else? Obviously, we all want to help people and we can do that through various ways. But specifically in your personal statement, you want to highlight why you chose medicine as your route. So some simple rules I think everyone should follow is that your personal statement should be very comprehensive yet concise. In other words, in one page, you should be able to tell a story and at the same time answer all the questions that I mentioned previously. But keep in mind, you do not want to go ahead and simply tell the admissions committee that you are an amazing leader or that you possess such and such qualities. Rather, you want to show them all these qualities through a story, through your experiences. Another big mistake that I see a lot of students do is that they basically take different parts of their activity section or their resume and they just jumble it all up in a personal statement. You do not want to do this. Right? You do not want to reiterate things that are already present in your activity section of your, of your application. So one thing you can do, however, is let's say in your activity section, one of your activities was that you took a trip to Guatemala and while you were there, you helped provide free medical care. So in your activity section, you should talk about specifically what did you do as a volunteer and what did you gain from that experience? In your personal statement, however, you can highlight a specific patient interaction that you may, you may have had during your trip. And finally, you do not want to over thesaurus, right? Do not take certain you know, words in your personal statement and just go to thesaurus.com to make it sound you know, more flowery, right? Admissions committee, they can, you know, they have so much experience reading personal statements and they can easily tell when you're being way too flowery. So avoid doing that. Keep it very clear and concise and straight to the point. Now, prior to writing your personal statement, I highly recommend creating a personal statement committee. Basically, find three to four people who are skillful writers and are willing to help you go from your first draft to your final draft. So an example would be a friend who is an English major, um, maybe one or two med students that you know are exceptional writers and you know they have you know great experience. However, the most important person that you want in your committee is anyone, could be an advisor, could be a doctor, could be a medical student who has worked in admissions and has experience reading thousands and thousands of personal statement. Because you see, you can have one or two med students look at your application, look at your personal statement, right? But at best, that med student who's in their third or fourth year of medical school, they may have read in their entire life maybe 50 personal statements. Whereas a person in admissions, literally it's their job to sit down and read thousands and thousands of personal statements, and they can clearly 
look at a personal statement and be like, yes, this is a solid personal statement or no, this is a bad personal statement. So for me, I really got lucky. Um, I asked one of my friend and her sister happened to be a medical student who also worked in admissions. And I just asked and she totally agreed to look at my personal statement. And it was only when she gave me the green light that I felt truly confident about my personal statement. And finally, I want to give you guys the ultimate backbone or, you know, the ultimate guide or structure to going about writing your personal statement. So I want to give credit where credit is due. This was a simple drawing, a simple outline that was given to me by my person, uh, by my pre-med advisor, uh, Miss P, Miss Tahani Prokopow. And so I, I'm just showing this to you guys. And basically it goes something like this. So at the bottom, you have your undergraduate career. And then after that, you have med school. And then after that, you have your life as a doctor. And then finally, after all that, it's, well, you know, death. And I'm going to show you how all of these things are connected and will help you write your personal statement. So before I explain this uh, drawing, you know, one question you have to ask yourself is, what is my mission? So in writing your personal statement, you need to ask yourself, what is your mission? What is the reason you chose medicine? So let me give an example. Your mission could be, you know, I want to improve the life of low income and immigrant families. That could be your mission. Your mission has to be something that is nor too specific or too broad, right? Something too broad would be, you know, I want to find a cure for cancer. Or something too specific would be, I want to, you know, find the cure for a specific gene mutation for such and such disease, right? You want to be something right in the middle, right? It could be such that, oh, I want to, you know, help. Um, improve the health of immigrant families, or it could be I want to um, promote wellness in women who go through, you know, abusive relationships or in one way or another have been abused, any one of those things. So now once you have your mission here at this undergraduate box, right, the different activities, your extracurricular things that you do in your undergraduate career, they should all somehow relate to your mission. So, for example, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and talk about my personal statement. So my mission was, you know, I want to improve the quality of life for low income and immigrant families. So during undergraduate career, there were several things that I were I was involved with certain extracurricular activities. So, for example, one of these tick marks was, you know, I volunteered at a free clinic that provided, you know, free care free medical care to low-income immigrant families, and we only saw patients that did not have insurance. The medications, all these services, ultrasound machine, every, every single procedure, whatever it was done through the clinic, it was all completely free of charge for, for low-income and immigrant families that would basically come to the clinic all the time. And then also, apart from that, you know, one of the things that I did was uh, volunteering with my local mosque. You know, we would basically collect, you know, basically dried food, clothing, and then in distribute, distribute these things throughout people in my community. So basically, my activities in my undergraduate career lined up with my mission. So then the next part, you have to ask yourself is, why is this, why do you need a medical education? Why do you need a medical education to fulfill your lifelong mission, right? How do these two things connect? So then this was this was kind of really tough for me to figure out. And then, you know, I had to really, really think about it. And I went back and I thought about how so many people in my community, you know, when it comes to providing for their family, they are usually able to get a job. They are usually able to put food on the table. However, the biggest 
factor that was stopping them from advancing in life was their health conditions, right? So for example, for a, I don't know, a father who's raising, say, five children, um, an average cost for their groceries would be maybe, say, $200, $300 per month. And I'm, I'm talking about in the city of Detroit. So now let's just say that same person, if he needs shoulder surgery, that could be 30000 40000 50000 So basically what I realized is that a lot of these families, they were able to meet, you know, meet basic necessities, but it was very difficult them for to advance anything more than that because of their health conditions, right? So many families I know personally that they were struggling with their diabetes simply because they couldn't afford their insulin, they couldn't afford their medications. So that was my connection. I, I basically said that, you know, I want a medical education because, you know, there are already, you know, other services that are helping me basic needs. But when it came to improving the health of low income and immigrant families, there wasn't really anything. So that's why I want to become a physician and kind of, you know, basically bridge that gap. And then finally, now say you've become, you know, you've become a doctor, right? You want to ask yourself, okay, is your mission something that can be sustained even after you leave this world, right? So for me, I know that like one of the things that I want to do ultimately is open up my own free clinic, you know, and something that even after, you know, even after I pass, you know, I want this to be something that people are taking benefit from. I want this to be something that after me, basically someone else is carrying the baton and then passing it on and so forth. So Really, you know, I think this drawing kind of really summarizes how to go about writing a personal statement. So when you are, you know, as you are going through your undergraduate career, as you are, you know, working on your applications, really think about this, right? What is my mission? What is that reason that I'm pursuing medicine? And then when it comes to your activities and everything, ask yourself, are my activities relating to my mission? How do they relate? You know? In one way or another, they should be, you know, all relating to my mission. And then also ask yourself, why do I need a medical education to fulfill my mission? And is this, and is my mission something that even after I pass, you know, the good deeds will carry on even after that? So, and that's basically it, guys. So if you have any questions, if you like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And then follow me on Instagram to follow my journey through medicine at OMS Nipu. And so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.